crack up when you hear this. <laughs> Hello, bitches and bastards as well. Or, well, even transgendered people as well, I suppose. I don't want to leave anyone out. So I've just come back from holiday about a half a week ago. And I left from Boston Airport, which is very interesting because it was the day before the Boston bombings. Which means nobody now believes me when I tell them that I've been on holiday to Boston. This is the really irritating part about coming back, is that everyone asks you, oh, you have a holiday romance, oh, you've been single for so long, I hope you had some sort of romantic encounter with you there. <laughs> you should really find someone. No, I didn't have a romantic encounter whilst I was there, but thanks for making me feel more depressed about being single than I already fucking was, because I really needed that. What kind of annoys me is that the closest thing I got to a holiday romance was to this girl that I met at the airport slash on the plane. And I'd been looking at her from when we went through boarding to, you know, when we were sitting opposite each other on the bus to the plane that we had. You know, it was, it was boarding and then we had to get on a bus and then to the plane, you know. And I was looking at her, trying to think of some way to talk to her that would not come off as why are you talking to me? You know, this is fucking creepy that you would talk to me, a total stranger, whilst trying to get on a plane to some foreign country. Now I have to bother with this seven hour awkwardness. Da da da. If you know what I mean. So we're walking up the steps to go onto the plane and you know, it was all going fine. She didn't really see me standing behind her and I didn't really say anything at that point either. But, you know, it was a nice little stand. So get this right, we got onto the aeroplane after this and, you know, obviously they told us where we were sitting and, you know, we were sitting, uh, she was sitting about, you know, five seats in front of me. So... You know, it wasn't impossible, but anyway, yes, before this, let's roll back to when we were walking onto the plane. Uh, so I was going down there to find my seat, and then uh, she was helping someone with the uh, overhead thing, trying to get it closed, and then I said, do you want me to help with that? And, I, and she said yes, and uh, pushed it up, and then, uh, you know, there was uh, about, you know, five seconds of silence after that and then she said would you like to go through and I said yes and that was about the end of of our conversation together and probably that's going to be the last time I see each other unless there's any chance she's watching this video now so you know if you got on a flight on the 27th of March 2013 and you recognize me then you know, leave a comment under this video. What really pissed me off about that is that we were both sitting on the exact same plane for seven hours. So, arguably, we could have said even more to each other than what we had said. But we didn't. It, it's like the girl I met at, in at Eisteddford all over again, you know, always wondering what it could have been with her and never finding out. So, disappointing. And I I'm pretty sure that her asking me if I wanted to go through was was sort of a done answer, you know. I, I was always going to say yes, unless I actually had the courage to say, well, you know, can I sit next to you for seven hours and bugger whoever was actually sitting next to you Originally, they can sit where I'm going to sit, or was going to sit. And what I hate most about this whole endeavour is that my confidence has grown about 6 billion percent in the last few months alone. And, you know, so this is a basically a blown endeavour of a man who is arguably now of low confidence, when about six months ago he was of very low confidence. I mean, to be fair to your local neighbourhood doctor man, Apart from going, well, I see you soon in my hotel room for a holiday romance, eh, hey, how's this? 
you know, I don't really see what else I could have done to woo her. So that's the closest thing I've got to a holiday romance so far, out of ten trips abroad. All to the same place, admittedly, but still, you know, if, if, it, if it happened the first time, I would have been eight years old, so, you know. Imagine saying you got a girlfriend at that age, but <laughs> anyway, yes, yeah, so if you're also a member of the Low to No Confidence Club and you've got a story about a holiday romance that wasn't to be, then why don't you put it in the comments box with the hashtag I'm just as pathetic as you, Tim. Goodbye!